everybody. We're back. What are we doing? <laughs> we are heading to the XDA race in at Virginia Motorsports Park. It's the uh, MTC Summer Nationals. Summer, what's that mean? Yeah, all of a sudden, the eastern side of the United States has gotten warm outside. We've been in these perfect conditions up to now. So what, what am I doing? I am going to go meet Tonsi, the owner of the S1000RR that we, uh, the 2020 that we did, that David found on road. Um, unfortunately, David only got to ride the bike three times, so we both, uh, Tonsi and I both feel like we've got a little unfinished business. So the goal of this trip, well, the goal every every trip, if you're a, if you've ever done the, any of this uh, traveling race scene, <laughs> we only shoot four. Qualifying number one, setting both ends of the national record, and winning the race. Wow, Brock, that sounds lofty. And it is. We're not going here for second place, we're going here to win. Now, I will admit, uh, the conditions last time David was riding his ZX10, he lowered the super stock national record down to an 8.66. That's really quick. And he bumped the uh, mile an hour record up to 165. That's really fast. So, apples to apples. I believe the BMW is faster than that. The question will be, can we get it done in these conditions at this race? As far as winning the race, everybody else is gonna be in the crappy conditions also. So I'm fairly confident that we, we have a very good shot at that. So anyway, we'll keep you posted on the progress and uh, we'll see you back here, hopefully at the racetrack. Hey everybody, we are, we made it to Virginia Motorsports Park. There's a private test session. This is Tonsi. We will talk to him a lot more this time. He brought the bike from Maryland. We met him here. And what we're doing now is we're prepping the bike. David Fondon is gonna ride the bike. But I wanna show you something. The last race, we kept having problems with the dynamic traction control. It would throw a warning up in the middle of Shane's run. Shane really, really had to deal with a lot of, a lot of poo when he rode the bike. And what we did to correct that was, if you wanna zoom down here, if you look at our video, I show you how to adjust this lever and put a little mark, but we don't really tell you what to do. Quite frankly, <laughs> we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to turn this damn thing off. So what, what I ended up doing was, this rod is what used to be in there. The problem is, is when you lower the bike too much, when you go to calibrate the dynamic traction control on the dash, it's not within its usable range and it says, no, you can't calibrate. So what we ended up doing was basically faking this out, adjusting it to where the original OEM mark was, and then we taped it in place so that the screen wouldn't come up. The problem is, if I put this rod back on, even after it was after it was calibrated, it went off into La La Land again because it knew something was wrong. So what we've done to try and cure that this time, if you want to zoom in here, we made a carbon fiber linkage and we're going to adjust this linkage up to where this is in the correct position so we can calibrate it but still keep the, the linkage on so the dynamic traction control should function. What's that gonna buy us? Quite frankly, we're not sure. We're drag racing, it wouldn't be as big a deal. But if there's any irregularities in the track, we're hoping that the suspension will help take care of that and help us go faster, run more mile an hour. So anyway, we'll figure it out. We're gonna be right, cutting right, back and forth and it's gonna be loud and noisy. Um, so maybe be the best video, but it, at least you're, it's like you're here, right? So here we go. I'm gonna go through the DDC calibration. So you have to go to this screen to calibrate, park the motorcycle on its side, sand, and dismount. Start, okay. All right, it failed. Why did it fail? It failed because it needs to be adjusted a little bit more, looks like this way. So all we're gonna do is come down here now, hit repeat, start, Failed again. Hold on one second. All right, so all I'm trying to do is match our original mark. 
to trick the bike into thinking it's at its stock height. That looks a little bit closer. Let's see if it'll accept calibration this time. Calibration was successful. So now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna lock these adjuster nuts down. And now the bike is going to think that it's stock height and this, the suspension is working correctly and hopefully a little lap around the pits here, I won't get the uh, DDC calibration failure screen. And if that's the case, we're ready to hit the racetrack. All right, we are here on a test day. We just went through the clutch. We just, uh, what else did we do, Tonsi? We put our little adjustment rod for the dynamic dampling control. Uh, we checked our swing arm extensions for fitment. That's always fun. Clutch feels good. David just managed to get this bike to launch on asphalt. Pretty good. All right, Tonsi, what are we gonna do this weekend? Uh, weather permitting, I think we're 65. Yeah, 855. You ready? We're waiting on you. Come on. Tonsi says a 55. We'll 65. have to see what happens with, what'd you say? 65. 65. All right, well, you need to go a 64 if you want this man's record. And you got 63. it. 63. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to you're good. Let's see what we got temperature-wise here. So, David, the only thing that really is sort of silly about this bike is they don't let you know the temperature of the engine okay. if you're in race in the race screen. So, see this little arrow down? Mm -hmm. You just, that matches this menu. Go down, one more. 184. 184, a little bit hot because we were messing around. And then you just, oh, menu, go up, back up, and now you're ready to race. Okay. All right, Let's have fun, be safe. Hold on, we have number one in points, Mr. David Fonda. And look at who's spying. There, look, look, there's nobody here, nobody. But who's, who's it gotta be, the Mike Davis. Why you gotta do this to me? Set you all side by side. It's not very fair. You look like you could eat him. A little bigger. <laughs> 90 pounds. <laughs> 90. So basically, you're saying you're carrying a small child with you. Yeah, I'm pregnant. Okay. okay. Twins. Did you get all the doodads turned off on it? <laughs> I <Okay>. think so. <laughs> we'll know if he misses a gear because he can't see the tack. Oh. <laughs> A hundred and sixty three. Not a bad first pass. He's going to bump the launch RPM up. Try to fix the foot a little better. That looked good. Eight seventy. 164. It's going to be an interesting weekend, my friend. I mean, for us. Mike's fucked. Let's take the hit. <laughs> I mean, I'm big enough to need it. <laughs> I think that's fair. I ain't no good. That was smooth. That was All right, smooth. guys. You can hear our bantering back and forth. So, you know, the current record is an 8.66 at 165. David's second pass in this air. The 872 at 164, 151, 60 foot. He had to fight a big wheelie. It's gonna be interesting to see if he wants us to pull a little gear off of it. But for now, in these conditions, it's hot out here. It's cooling down a little bit, but man, that is fast AF. All right, so what have we done to the bike so far? David requested that we pull yet another tooth off the rear of the rocket. Able to lock the gas in second gear. 
he's, he, the bike's coming up, he's having to back off the gas, so hopefully we can keep it down this time. I think no matter what, he'll get it to leave, even though we keep pulling gear off of it, and it's gonna give us a little bit more wheelbase, so. This ought to be real interesting. We just checked the density altitude. It was about 1,200 feet. We got a little bit of a tailwind. We might just see the quickest pass this bike's ever gone in a minute. at 167. Alright, this is real racing. Track food, making stuff work. So, what, what the hell am I doing? I got a tapered bit here. Because the sprockets to race this bike don't exist, I'm having to drill out GSXR 750 sprockets that still aren't right, but it's better than nothing. And the only way we're going to get this bike, the full potential out of this bike, is to keep pulling gear off of it because it is an absolute monster to ride. We'll see if this helps. Testing today, we tried different gearing combinations, we tried different clutch combinations. David's getting used to how the bike launches and how it reacts. Last night ran a Stellar 861. Today ran an 871 at 168 in the heat of the day. We were just checking out the density altitude. We lost almost a thousand feet since his 871 today. So all things being equal, it should go down to about a 65, 865, 864. If David can get that launch down and we have changed it back to where it's been working very well for him, um, you think the bike can run 850s? Um, I try to run 50. It's not easy, is it? She has a power. 
a lot of power. A lot to, of power. Yeah, to run a 50, but so really it's so easy. It's too much hard. How many passes do you have on your ZX10? If you had to guess. I know you won the beach. So all last season you won the championship. So you probably made. 200 miles, yes. 200 miles on the dyno. That's the other thing, guys. When we got here, we had to change the bike back to when, when David rode it the first time because Toxie rode it up and went riding around the street, having fun with his street bike. So now we're back here trying to set a new ET record, a new mile an hour record, and uh, win this race. Show them just exactly what a badass you are. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll keep you posted. All right, guys. We're not trying to burn or anything. We're going to walk down through the super stock lanes and see just exactly how many of the competitors that Rocky performance is off.
behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. All of the fast people are here. Super fast fondant, Mr. Tonsi. You really need to come to one of these if you haven't before. Hey, let me tell you what's going on here. Today is Sunday, it's race day. So our original goal was to come, qualify number one, set both ends of the national record and win. Have we done that? No. Well, yes, but let me explain. So we came off the trailer to a tuning test session on Thursday with the bike ready to go. The very first pass David made on it was an 865 at 170. Now the current record is an 866 at 166.5 held by David on his own bike. So this technically broke the record but it's not a record unless you do it in your class. So then, David made another pass and ran just an absolutely stunning 861 at 167.16. Now, we had a corrected altitude of only about 500 feet. That's really, really good conditions. And we knew from the weather forecast the entire weekend that was gonna be our day to go fast because it was just gonna keep getting warmer and more humid and warmer and more humid so on our we got some practice runs on friday and our first qualifying run we wanted to try and figure out different ways to run the bike depending on how what the weather conditions were going to be like we changed the clutch we changed the gear we honestly weren't we weren't worried about having a fast setup because we have the fast setup we have it but we were experimenting because a lot of guys will be like well brock you went 860s how did he qualify with an 880? Well, we were changing the clutch, getting more aggressive, less aggressive, changing the gearing, more aggressive, less, less aggressive, etc. So that we knew what not to do on race day as well as what to do on race day. So he qualified with an 8.80 in the last round of competition yesterday. It was super hot, super humid. To give you an example, he ran straight right next to Zachary Allen number one qualifier with a really good 867. Well, when he and David lined up side by side, same track, same day, Zachary went at 887, David went at 8.80. But also, when David typically races Zachary, and I talked to them both about this, I apologize, I didn't have the camera, you'd love this conversation. But when they typically race, David said they are side by side. They shift, they shift, they're side by side. So whoever gets the jump typically wins the race. When he ran Zachary on this bike, he said every time he shifted, he said he knew Zachary was over there, but every time he shifted, he went and walked away, a little, walked away a little more, a little more, and the time ticket actually shows that. Hold on. And when I say the time ticket shows that, you can see here, David is in the right lane. They cut very similar lights, a little bit of an advantage to Zachary. 154, 60 foot for David, 156 for Zachary. To the 330, they were almost identical, 3.931, 3.943. People ask, Brock, why do you get so detailed? Why do you, go, why do you pick the O-rings out of your chain? Look at this, guys. We're talking hundreds or even thousands of seconds make the difference in this class. So, eighth mile, 5.84. 5 David has already, he went quicker at a 5.80. 129 to 131.77, so we got him on the speed. But then, as we, well, uh, when we calculate the back half ET, which is the time it takes to go from the eighth, eighth mile mark, the ET mark, to the quarter mile ET mark, David's time took 2.992 seconds which is considerably off. He ran a 2.92 in the good weather, so that shows you how much it slows you down. Versus Zachary's 3.031. So when David said every time he shifted, he got a little more, got a little more, that 400's on the back half, everybody talks about your ET. It's 
to pick up 400s on the back half, it takes it takes half a season of tuning. It's really, really, it, uh, it's crazy how hard it is. These guys, these bikes will run all year long within five one hundredths of their of their back half ET, and the only thing that changes that typically is the weather. So anyway, we are back to the H61 setup. We're gonna go out. We all start qualifying pass. Our last qualifying pass last night they had a bunch of oil downs. We were supposed to get one this morning. They're running too late. They said, listen, sorry, super stock. You're just gonna go straight to racing. So we got the race tune up in it, and we will show you what we do with that here in a little bit. All right, guys. We have done a hell of a headwind. We see what we can do in this horrible, horrible condition. These boys are in trouble. density altitude. This track is actually, the actual altitude is 190 feet above sea level. The conditions are so poor right now that it's like we're racing at 2,700 feet above sea level. And just to give you an example, a thousand feet will remove about 8 hundredths off of the ET. So we're about two tenths off where we should be. Add to that, we also have a five mile an hour dead straight headwind. So I told David before his last pass because we, the best so far has been an 861, second best 865. If he could duplicate the 861 pass, that's still in these conditions only an 881, 83, somewhere around in there. And the five mile an hour headwind is basically one to one. So he went out, and did what David does. Ran a killer pass, 155, 582, 131. You notice the eight small mile an hour is down. He went 882 at 161. If that, even in this crap air, if this headwind wasn't here, he'd have went 166 or so on that pass. So I just want to let you guys know why we're not flying like we were on Friday night. So, we'll talk to David here for a moment. You want to come over and translate? David speaks English. My Spanish is terrible. His English keeps getting better. Little by little. So, one of the things I've noticed about David, he's very particular about his setups. He's, he is absolutely meticulous. So, we chase some things up, we chase some things down. With what we have right now, we think the bike is about as good as it can be. Yes, you were uh, that so that that's a great point. Uh, we ran an 882. The next closest to us was Chris Moore at an 889. Everybody else was up in the uh, 890s or so. So we we uh, we did very well. Fastest bike on the track, yes, sir. Right now, yes, sir. so there are other things we can do to make this bike quicker. We just don't have the ability just yet. But we've been working together, talking about some things. So, like I said, right now we're about as good as we can get. We put it in David's hands to go out. What if, what do you think about the bike overall? Do you like it? Yeah, I like the bike. It's a fast bike. Uh, Lots of power. Yeah, I need my one. 
Okay. Oh, maybe I don't need a hot one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, I have one. Maybe a few years, and then you will work to your next year. Uh, my CX-10 is to my is one store. Sure. But the first year is short. Okay. To help. So, it's more easy for me to run this bike because my bike, my CS10, I lose like 8,000 RPM. Uh, it's not easy to put uh, 8,000 to leave a uh, short way very high. What happens if you try to leave at 8,000 on this? I will, I will be on track. On track. So, this bike, you leave it to 6,000, like smooth, all hard, no need, nothing. You smooth, the front tire in the drawer, open the drawer, she runs with yourself. So, second gear, can you... Yeah, no, no second gear. Uh, you put a second gear, 80% torque, a little bit, 100, yes. Yeah. No, no good second gear, 100%. Awesome. Yeah. So, how many passes do you think you have on your ZX-10? In my bike, maybe... Test passes, race passes? 60, 80 passes. Okay. In this so, pass, this bike chain, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, 10. From a tuning standpoint, I know you guys work together with the ZX10 versus versus the BMW. Do you like the competition and the stuff that's going on, or would you prefer it be a little dumber like the Suzuki? I, I don't mean that. They're just easier. Dumber's probably not the right word. Uh, what? No. We just stick on this. Yeah. Yeah. We just stick on this. We just have to learn to work with it and keep on doing practice passes. By the time we get to 40 passes or 35 passes, we've already figured it out. And this is David Sr., by the way. And uh, Chauncey, bike owner Chauncey. So, Hello. So, so Chauncey, why did you buy this bike? Well, um, I've raced for 20 years and uh, kind of retired. BMW came out in 2010. It was new, it was a uh, synchronized transmission, the auto ship. So it sparked interest in me. In the last eight years, I kind of had my fill with it. And then the new bike came out, it more features sparked my interest. So the new changes that come along with the electronics would interest me. Overcoming them is what's interesting to me. That's why I chose this bike. We really appreciate Tonsi actually bought this bike. Rode it around, got his, uh, got the miles on it, well, got the viewer to modify it, and then brought it to us to go uh, mess with the go racing. So we've been very lucky to get this, this team together. And I mean, David is leading in the points right now. So for him to come and ride a whole new bike that we really don't know a lot about, comparatively, that shows the kind of, uh, that shows the kind of guy he is. He's not afraid of anything. Have a really good time. Hopefully, we can uh, finish off this, uh, this weekend with uh, with a win. We'll see what happens, and we'll let you know. Great 
great job, David. How about that BMW horsepower? Everybody, we are in the finals against Jirek Givens, who is riding the wheels off of his GSXR 1000. Mr. Fondon getting a good feel for the BMW. Weather's looking a little bit better. Mr. Givens is fast. This is damn sure no gimme. Let's we'll see what we can do. All right, guys, this girl. out the win this weekend. What I said up there at the line that Jira Givens was no joke and this was not going to be a gimme. Let me show you what I'm talking about. He went out, cut a 124 light to David's 159. He did a 152 60 foot to David's 153. 330 was a 394. David picked it up a little with a 393. Eighth mile, 384 to a, or 584 to a 583. 129 miles an hour to 130 miles an hour. BMW picks up a little steam. 8.889 to 8.850. 159 miles an hour, 162 miles an hour. The margin of victory, right margin of victory, 0.0044 seconds. That's a close race. That's what super stock is. And that's why all the details matter and you have to make them all work together and then you can win these events. All right, guys, we're tearing down. We're here with Will. And King. King, yeah. Will King. Will is a technical director. Or what? Advisor. Advisor. Personnel. Personnel. All right, so we're, excuse me, with the sweat in my eyes. When you say you want to be a racer, it's fun. Uh, but Will, what are you looking for? Well, tonight we are did a quick inspection, make sure there's no nitrous air filter, a couple class specific things. Right now we're doing a ballast the, check. The air filter must be installed. Must be installed. Um, no nitrous, uh, dry systems, anything like that. Now we're doing a quick ballast check to look for lead or any illegal substances in the front end. Do you previous check the calipers? Yep, make sure no lead in them, the pistons were moving, the pads were shafted on both sides. All right. All right, well said. It is 9.30 on a Sunday. We just got all cleared, good to go from the XDA technical department. Now all we have to do is throw all this junk up in Thompson's trailer and tell him, see you later. Or we put it back together for him because we love him, he's a good dude. I appreciate it. And then we uh, then we'll head on out of here, David. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you who like to buy 
Yeah, I like it. For those of you who like to purchase Prox Performance products and like the way we do it, the reason we came here was when we first started this project, they had made a couple passes. They were very good, but we really didn't get enough info. You know, sure, we'll sell you a pipe, we'll sell you a filter, but what do you do with it? How do you set up your clutch? How do you adjust this thing that has a computer mouse on the handle grip? Because you've got so many different things to adjust. Now, we can say in all honesty that your bike has the ability to win a national super stock event if you purchase our products and set them up how we say it. You can ride like this man. So, let's see how well you can ride. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I know it's only a, a, a two video series really, but we had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. Till next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then. Man, <laughs> what a race. I know I sort of closed it off last night. It was crazy hot. I don't even, even remember the words that were coming out of my, my mouth. It was hotter than the devil's anus. Inspecting that bike, and that, that was an inspection. Inspection is when they have you pull off body parts and go look for things you may be doing wrong. A teardown is, hey Brock, why don't you show me a connecting rod real quick? So, we actually got really lucky there. This is the first time that I have tuned a bike for super sport or super stock since 2010 when Keith Dennis premiered the BMW at AMA Drag Bike in Montgomery, Alabama. I think we made it to the semifinals and managed to somehow get beat, but we didn't know anything about the bike then. And then at the, then at the end of that race, AMA Drag Bike pulled me into the trailer and said, Rock, this is it, we're done, no more. Finished. So I thought we had some unfinished business there because I know these BMWs are fast. Well, fast forward, holy cow, 11 years, am I getting old? And here we are with an opportunity to do it again. One thing I really noticed was back then, we had a lot more of an advantage than we do now. This was tight. This was this racing was close. Okay, we're on the, the fastest bike ever, blah, blah, blah. Well, listen. Think about it this way. I know a lot of the guys that are racing this class. Back in the day, they didn't really know about Allison Oil, Petron. We didn't have Sprint filters. They damn sure didn't know about taking the O-rings out of their chains. So <laughs> we've managed to uh, equip our competition with our secrets to beat us. So to be able to squeak past this, our first outing out, even with David Fawnon, yes, he's national champion, has a badass young man right there, was really, really difficult. You know, we weren't able, or, okay, when we started this, what were the goals? Qualify number one, set both ends of the national record, and win the race. So, did we qualify number one? No. Uh, the only evening, the Friday night session, the first actual qualifying session, where the weather was okay, we had made a change to the gearing and actually went in the wrong direction, so David qualified number three, which is fine. That really doesn't matter. We're not, you know, when it comes, what we care about is winning the race because we knew that the weather was gonna to continue to get shitty, so we were gonna to have to race in shitty weather, so we just tested a whole bunch of things so that when it was race day, we knew we were good. First couple rounds, you know, trying a couple more things and then we get to uh, <laughs> we get to Chris Moore who was riding the wheels off of that ZX-14 I don't know what got into him and uh, man we took off and I want I'm trying to watch Dave I'm trying to watch Chris and I saw Chris get out on him I'm like oh damn we better we better put it in overdrive and catch this dude because otherwise we're gonna take a whooping and go home and uh, that that one was a squeaker attention to detail a lot of you are going to wonder why we don't have footage of racing Chris Moore going down the track. Well, that's simple because that GoPro on the back of that bike is a performance disadvantage. And regardless of how slow I don't, or how small, I don't care if it's half a mile an hour, I don't care if it's a tenth of a mile an hour, I don't care if it's a hundredth of a mile an hour, we want to win. So 
camera had to come off and it did not come back on because we knew we could not give up an ounce to the guys that were uh, the guys that were really 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 putting the numbers down we had to beat them no matter what we pulled it off stuff like this matters well, I've even told people before you know we don't have a data logger on the bike but you log data during eliminations I mean during practice but then you take it out for any kind of eliminations now you're not allowed to have it in super stock but the sensor just the sensor in the pipe will slow you down a measurable difference on the drag strip the drag strip is the ultimate performance measuring tool you got to use stuff like this to your advantage everywhere and all these little things add up and then <laughs> Somehow or other, I, I guess Zachary Applegate's clutch had a problem or something, and we ended up in the final against Jairek Gibbons. And when I say that, this is why we race. Just because you're faster than somebody else doesn't mean you're going to win. It's who wins the race. We come up, and I had watched Jairek all through eliminations, and he was, he was sort of up and down, up and down, and up against us. And he does it almost every time. He does this dry hop, and it's like, we always throws it on the ground and I'm thinking has he got clutch problems what's going on well let me tell you what it was I was like you know how the birds when, when a predator's after him they'll give you the, the the limp oh I'm hurt I'm hurt I'm hurt well he goes out there cuts a light on David and runs his best pass of eliminations he wanted to win that race and it took every ounce of that BMW's horsepower to run him down and put us in the winter circle. The margin of victory on that pass was 44 thousandths of a second. That's crazy. I don't even know what that is. I have to calculate it. Probably about that far. <laughs> So that tells you how close this racing is. So the next time somebody says, oh my God, I can't believe Brock's cooking his chain on his barbecue grill to get the thick grease out or grinding his brake pad so he's got a little bit less friction, 44 thousandths of a second was the difference between winning and losing, and we like to win. It was, this was no walk in the park. Was a, uh, it was a great time. If you ever think you want to come out and race the class, just do it. Even if, you know, you're, maybe you're not going to win. Maybe you're not, whatever. You're going to learn something and you are going to get faster and become a faster rider as a result of trying. You can stay home and watch it on YouTube, but believe me, we have a whole hell of a lot more fun when we're there and when we're doing it. I wish I could do more. I've got a lot of conflicts in my schedule when it comes to the to drag racing i do some lifestyle events where with with the harley davidson stuff so anyway this time <laughs> thanks for following along with this i hope you learned something i learned something if i can learn something i know you can learn something so until next time i'm brock from brock's performance we'll see you then